Hey everyone, Mrs. Norris here. Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions about my Bitmoji classroom. Um, first of all, I wanna give credit to a hipster art teacher on Instagram because she's the one that I got the idea from in the first place. And then uh, as I said on Instagram, she planted the seed and I watered it until it became this insane jungle that you see in front of you. So um, I just wanted to give you a little tour of my Bitmoji classroom. So um, over here on the uh, bookshelf side of the screen, um, the majority of these things, first of all, on the screen in total have links attached to them. Um, so for example, when I was um, a teacher at my previous site uh, and I taught ceramics, one of my kids made me a ceramic domo box. So and it used to sit on top of the shelf and I would tell the kids when I left to um, go somewhere and had a guest teacher that Domo was watching them. So I have Domo here and if you click on him, for example, it's gonna take you to an article about Domo um, and who he is and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the majority of the icons that you see on the screen are going to have a link attached to them. Um, I did try to personalize it. So like there's pictures of me and my husband and my dog and my stepson. Um, those don't have links, obviously, but um, the majority of everything else does. So all I did to create this, and I did watch a couple of YouTube tutorials um, just to kind of get a quick overview of how to create one but then the explosion that you see in front of you was very much just me and who I am and I designed it myself so uh, what I did was I started with the background and I searched on to um, Google just plain Google and I typed in uh, unicorn donut transparent and then uh, also background and then opened up images and I tried to find um, a picture that was closest to what it was that I was looking for and then uh, I would find the picture for example if this were the one actually this is the one I chose um, I would right click on it and copy the image and then for my bitmoji let me close this back down and open up a new blank i would paste it and resize it so that it fit and then i did things like i copied and pasted that so and then i flipped it and moved it over so that it sort of overlapped as close as I could get it to overlap. And I grouped them together and resized it so that it fit the whole screen. So now I have my background, my wallpaper. And then from there to get, for example, the wood floor, um, I searched up, uh, wood floor and wall background, right? So um, I think this is the one I chose. So I copied this one as well and went back to here. And then what I did, because I don't need the wall piece, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I cut this down or trimmed it down to just the wall, brought it down to the bottom, and then resized it to fit. So now I have my base background. And from my base background, I'm going to start adding the different elements. Um, so when I do a search for anything, I wanted to make sure that I typed in, for example, desk, um, computer, transparent, right? And then didn't like these, so I would type in cartoon, 
see if that would give me something a little bit car more cartoony or um, also clip art. So I kind of did my search that way and really just making sure that you add in either transparent or PNG or vector. And you're searching for something that's going to allow you to put it onto your screen without showing the background. So when I found something that I liked, so let's uh, say, for example, I like this. Um, I right click on it. And even though I typed in vector, it doesn't mean it's going to be a vector. So that that's what this blank slide is for. It's kind of my test slide, right? So I would paste things on here and Obviously, this is not one that I'm going to want to use because I don't want a white background. When you're looking for a transparent um, or PNG or um, a vector, you want to make sure, first of all, that it's got the square background, but that doesn't always mean that it's going to be transparent. So that's why it's good to have sort of a test um, paste slide where you can paste these things and make sure. So like, see, somebody probably copied and pasted this as well, which is why the square background is still there so I'm not going to be able to use it but sometimes you can search within a search and find something from there so again I, I mean I would have to continue this process until I found a desk that I liked that fit with what I wanted and also was transparent so that the background the white background or that gray square background didn't show up. So again, adding those keywords like transparent or PNG, those are going to help you, but it's not always going to be a guarantee that you get something that um, you're going to be happy with or is actually transparent. So let's try this one. So again, Again, it's just a matter of searching and it, it is a very time consuming process. And if you're like me, you start off with something small and then it kind of balloons into this huge thing that you've got going on here. So um, the other key thing is to make sure that you have the Bitmoji Chrome extension. So you're gonna make sure that you have Chrome extension Bitmoji and then you can add it onto uh, your Chrome as an extension. And so when I wanna add in my Bitmoji, I just click on the icon and then you can see where I've started with some of these. You can click and drag it. So I'm gonna go to my blank just to show you here. You can click and drag. It's gonna turn out huge. So you wanna make sure that you <coughs> resize it. Um, this, again, is sort of my play space to resize things to make sure that they're going to work out before I add them onto my screen. Um, down at the bottom here, you can see that there's a, uh, a little banner and I've added icons to each of these. To make this, it was all about layering. So it started off as a transparent, you can see a transparent um, string of Polaroids. And from here, I <clears throat> added my pictures in. And then when I resized the pictures, I found all three. I resized them to how I wanted to and then selected the banner itself. And when I do arrange, bring to the front, now you can see it takes the picture and puts it behind the, the banner. So <clears throat> it's about playing with your sizing. It's about kind of during a, during doing a search through of images that are going to be transparent and then playing with layering. So the main things that you're going to use are this arrange under this arrange tool in the menu spent, uh, menu bar, uh, you know, ordering the, the different images to, to layer them, um, rotating them, let me just uh, kind of pick one here. Um, rotating them so that, you know, they, they are uh, rotated. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. Uh, flipping things horizontal. Like you can see my person, my little bit emoji is 
looks like they're sitting and facing right, but the original Bitmoji is actually facing left. So that required me to um, flip it horizontally. So again, become uh, well familiar with the arrange tool. Um, I don't like using the insert image because they don't really have a very good selection. I prefer to use a Google search um, through the Google images to find stuff and then just copying and pasting it. Um, so again, it's all about making it you. Um, I suggest including a little bit of personal, you know, what, whatever your boundaries are for your students, because that makes it a little bit more fun if you personalize it, but then also obviously make sure that you're including links that are related to uh, whatever content area that you teach. Um, if you have other tools for them, for example, this one would take them, the welcome sign takes them to the uh, website for the class. Um, ways that you can use this, I'm thinking next year, because this is something I just discovered in the school year is almost over. Next year, I can use it as a um, back to school night to show my parents. I can use it where I show it to my students and they do a scavenger hunt for Mrs. Norris. Um, <clears throat> I can, I, I was thinking of having them create one to use as a welcome uh, all about me type um, alternative to the normal all about me things that people do. So there's a lot of uses for this. It's something I'm really glad that I discovered. Um, and over time, I'm sure it's going to change, but it's definitely a great interactive tool to use with classes.